Resources landed, hundreds of them, golden, silent, coming down from the sky like great snowflakes. And the people of Earth stood and stared as they descended, waiting dry mouth to find what waited inside for us, and none of us knowing if we would be here tomorrow. But you didn't notice it, because that day, the day the sources came, by some coincidence, was the day that the graves gave up their dead and the zombies pushed up through soft earth or erupted, shambling and dull-eyed, unstoppable, came towards us, the living, and we screamed and ran. But you did not notice this. Because on the saucer day, of which was the zombie day, it was Ragnarok also. And the television screens showed us a ship built of dead men's nails, a serpent, a wolf, all bigger than the mind could hold, and the cameraman could not get far enough away, and then the gods came out, but you did not see them coming. Because, on the source of zombie battle in God's day, the floodgates broke, and each of us was engulfed by genies and sprites, offering us wishes and wonders and eternities and charm and cleverness and true brave hearts and pots of gold while giants fifo fummed across the land and killer bees, <laughs> but you had no idea of any of this, because that day, the saucer day, the zombie day, the Ragnarok and fairies day, the day the great winds came and snows and the cities turned to crystal, the day all plants died, plastics dissolved, the day the computers turned, the screens telling us we would obey, the day angels drunk and muddled, stumbled from the bars and all the bells of London were sounded, the day animals spoke to us in Assyrian, the Yeti day, the fluttering capes and arrival of the time machine day. You didn't notice any of this because you were sitting in your room, not doing anything. Not even reading, not really. Just looking at your telephone, wondering if I was going to call. This is a poem that hasn't been collected, and uh, it's a true story, or at least as true as any story about 8th century Irish saints landing in Scotland can be. Um, and I like it because it's the kind of story that actually, when you start thinking about it, like many great religious stories, perhaps the message is not the message that uh, people have been taking from it all along. So, it's called In Relig Oran. When Saint Columba landed on the island of Iona, his friend Oran landed with him, though some say Saint Oran waited in the shadows of the island waiting for the saint to land there. I believe they came together, came from Ireland, were like brothers with a blonde and brave Columba, and the dark man they called Oran. He was Oran, like the otter was the other. There were others, and they landed on Iona, and they said, we'll build a chapel. It's what saints did when they landed. <laughs> Oran, priest of sun or fire, or from Ora, meaning dark-haired. But their chapel kept on crumbling. And Columba took the answer from a dream or revelation that his building needed on, needed death in the foundations. Others claim it was doctrinal, and since Oran and Columba were debating, as the Irish love debating, about heaven, since the truth is long forgotten, we are left with just their actions. By their actions shall you know them. St. Columba buried Oran, still alive with earth about him, buried deep with earth upon him. Three days later, they returned their stocky monks with spades and mattocks, and they dug down to St. Oran, so Columba could embrace him, touch his face, and say his farewells. Three days dead, they brushed the mud off when St. Oran's eyes blinked open. Oran grinned at St. Columba. He had died, but now was risen, and he said the words the dead know in a voice like wind and water. 
He said, heaven is not waiting for the good and pure and gentle. There's no punishment eternal. There's no hell for the ungodly, nor is God as you imagine. St. Columba shouted, quiet! And to save the monks from error, shoveled mud onto St. Oran. So they buried him forever. And they called the place St. Oran's. In its churchyard, kings of Scotland, kings of Norway, all were buried on the island of Iona. Some folk claim it was a druid priest of sunlight that was buried in the earth of good Iona just to hold the church foundations. But for me, that's much too simple. And it libels St. Columba, who cried, Earth! Throw earth on our and stop his mouth with mud this moment, lest he bring us to perdition. He imagine it a murder, as one saint entombed another underneath that holy chapel. While St. Oran's name continues martyred heretic, his bones still hold the chapel stones together. And we join them, kings and princes, in his graveyard, in his chapel, for it's Oran's name they carry. He's embraced in his damnation by the simple words he uttered. There's no hell to spite the sinners. There's no heaven for the blessed. God is not what you imagine. And perhaps he kept on preaching, for he died and he had risen until silence crushed or muffled by the soil of Iona. So Columba, he was buried on the island of Iona decades later, but they disinterred his body and they took it to Dan Patrick, where it's buried with St. Patrick and St. Bridget. So the only saint is Oran on the island of Iona. Don't go digging in that graveyard for the kings of old, the mighty, or archbishops and their riches. They are guarded by St. Oran, who will rise up from the grave dirt like the darkness, like an otter. If he sees the sun no longer, he will touch you, he will taste you, he will leave his words inside you. God is not what you imagine, nor is hell, and nor is heaven. Then you'll leave him in his graveyard and forget the shadow's terror. As you rub your neck, remember only this. He died to save us, and that St. Columba killed him on the island of Iona.